Look over there. Not you. No. Yes. Very much. Thank you. I'll take two. My drag character is Gizel Anouin and I live in Montreal. Bad. I just have to clean up your hairline. Oh my god. What do you think? Who is that handsome person? And I want to leave the gray on the sides because I yeah, think it. I think it's good too. I think the first time I became aware of drag was watching Julie Andrews in the film Victor Victoria. Basically, to see her dressed as this man and passing was, was kind of it was a thrill. And I that was the first time I really kind of had the idea that such a thing could exist. I've been doing Gizo for over 15 years now. It started as a lark. I did him a few times, uh, mostly cabaret acts or maybe hosting cabarets. And then he kind of got his own vibe happening and soon was performing in exotic places like Maubeuge and Ljubljana. Now, originally, he was a bit more sexy and sexualizing and objectifying. But very quickly, I'm like, oh, that's not the drag king that I'm interested in doing. So he's like a little more tortured, vulnerable, philosophical, you know, seen it all, jaded, definitely a feminist. I always played him as a homosexual, really, in my mind. But, you know, a lot of ladies uh, throw themselves at him and, yeah. <laughs> Gizo has a great sense of humor. He's very wry. He has a way of seeing the world. I don't know where it comes from to kind of improv speak as Gizo. Some of the jokes make me laugh, but of course on the inside because I have to keep a straight face. Sweet Valentine. La 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 la. To be humming. Strong, like a serrano ham. Originally, it felt more like play. The costume was a gateway towards expressing myself in a way that wasn't as easily done when I was in my day-to-day -day drag of being a young woman. To be able to be in the room as Gizot la Nuit and have people react to me as Gizot la Nuit and not as Alexis O'Hara in a costume uh, has shown me things that I don't think I would have seen otherwise in terms of how people relate to a man or a man-looking thing versus how they relate to a woman or a woman-looking thing. You put on the high heels and and suddenly your body is changed, you know. And whereas if I put on Gizo's shoes and I put a packer in my pants then I feel like my whole center of gravity kind of like lowers in a sense and I have a different footing and perspective in the world. My body changes and how the what kind of words are going to come out of my mouth, you know. This is a packer. So that goes in the pants, you know, it's living right there. So it's under there. It's just imagine. Dick in a dress. I don't know. I see like a wig, right? So long hair. You put long hair on the first time, it'll change how you move your head. Put one of these in your pants, it'll change how you walk across a room. It is not entirely anodyne as a prop, as a costume, or as a symbol. You know that. Eyes closed. Cool. Merci. Cool. Today, Michael Venus, the impresario of Never Apart, has been commissioned by Toronto Pride to take 10 photos of queers impersonating other famous Canadian queers. And so I chose Katie Lang because ever since I was a tender tween, 
I have been compared to the incredible Katie Lang. Gizo has this currency with an audience that I would have to work harder to gain. His look automatically kind of makes people smile and so there's an openness that occurs. It's been a really interesting process. I mean, I didn't go in it thinking that I was going to have, it was a gateway towards any kind of gender expression or any tour, any sort of journey of um, transitioning or anything like that. Uh, for me, it was really just play, but it did get deeper over the years. You're cherry picking. When I am Gizo, I am this clown, but I am still me with my radical beliefs, and I try to use the medium of comedy to give dignity and power and the right to be ridiculous uh, to all characters, including this obviously queer motherfucker. Cool. Got it. Two shoots in one.